I am sorry. I am so, so sorry. Not only to everybody that watches my videos, but to myself, Tatiana Maslani, my brain cells, my integrity, and my dignity for the absolute nonsense that I have seen in this show. Imagine. I actually said that She-Hulk episode 6 and 8 were actually good episodes, and I guess in hindsight, they were good setups for what I would eventually see as a mediocre finale payoff, but this... This is a new low. Honestly, the absolute low. This might be, no, this is, the second worst season finale that I've ever seen to any show in my entire life. Obviously, nothing will ever take the cake from Game of Thrones. Man, that was shit, but so was this. Honestly, it wasn't even a finale. Nothing got solved. Character arcs were a complete joke. And this is by far the most insecure writing that I've seen from a writing room, and they even showed us the morons in the writing room. You know. Morons. <laughs> oh my god, let me explain. If you don't feel absolutely disrespected by the She-Hulk season finale, let me lay it out for you. The episode starts off immediately following the aftermath of the She-Hulk sex tape leak and the first Hulk out moment for Jen. If you can even call it that, the show certainly is because unless Jen takes a plea deal in order to never become the She-Hulk again, she's going to jail. She's an out of control rage monster, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? How is she an uncontrollable rage monster? We must have been watching different shows. I'm pretty sure at the end of the episode, Jen didn't harm a single person. It was completely coherent when the armed men told her to stop, which she inevitably did and corroborated. So the definition of out of control could just mean something different in the world of She-Hulk. We then start to bleed into what I can only interpret as the most insecure writing that I have witnessed in my entire life. My whole life. The whole life I've been alive. We started hemorrhaging, and I'll guarantee you by the end of the episode, we will be bleeding out. With Jen losing her job due to not being able to become the She-Hulk, Nikki and Poodle Man take the lead on the Hulk King and Intelligentsia, aka the infamous internet trolls. Man, like tell me you're a sensitive and insecure writer without actually telling me. For a multi-billion dollar studio that seems like they can do no wrong, and for the fanboys and girls that feel like that multi-billion dollar studio could do no wrong, they seem to definitely be hearing the criticism. To skim through all of the scenes that don't matter, Hulk King is revealed to be the weird incel dude Todd Phillips, Abomination shows up to give the group a self-vitalizing pep talk. He has Abomination sized clothes now, I wonder if Edna Mode is the one who makes those, it doesn't matter I guess. Hey, the Hulk makes an appearance. He must have just got back from Sakaar. Oh shit, there's Titania punching into the finale with her classic Kool-Aid Man style entrances. Nikki even made a joke about that one. Wow, I'm really enjoying myself. This is peak television. Wong even let me know on that one. You notice how the characters in this finale are telling me and the audience how and what we should care about right now instead of writing a normal fucking season finale? Well, not even Jen is interested in this clusterfuck. And before my brother can call the ambulance for our future aneurysms that my brain cells are holding back, she stops it. And just like that, we're done. But wait, we're not done. You see here, Jen has a better finale for us, but she's not the writer of the show you see, so how will she achieve such an amazing feat? I've heard of writing a show and directing that show. I've heard of writing a show and producing that show. I have heard of writing a show and acting in that show. But never in my life have I seen a character of a show write her own show. I'm sorry, I have to take a break. Right, so stay with me because this is not a joke. So I'm not liking the ending, you're not liking the ending, Jen's not liking the ending, so what do we do? Well, Jen proceeds to break into my Disney Plus subscription as if she pays the bill, proceeds to go to Marvel's Assemble, which is a genius idea because before this finale, I didn't even know that show existed. I still won't be watching. And she holds her way into, wait, get this, the actual writing room. actually show their faces on my screen in a season finale of a show for She-Hulk. This is incredible. Truly imagine the Game of Thrones season one finale right now, right before Ned Stark gets absolutely decapitated and the man proceeds to look at me and say, nah, this isn't right. You guys don't want this, right? Or Padme mid choke looked at me and to the audience and said, nah, this isn't right. You don't want this. Fuck it. 
Thor should have just looked at me while Stormbreaker was half deep in Thanos' chest and just switched it up. This isn't a Thanos movie, this is an Avengers movie. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? This is a joke. Incompetent and insecure writers, and trust me, a nickname for this crew will come to this noggin of mine soon enough, I'm sure. Proceed to tell Jen that a new ending cannot be constructed without the consultation of Kevin. We all know who that is, and while I'm sure this finale couldn't get any more nonsensical, there's absolutely no way that they're going to show the man, the myth, the legend himself, Kevin Feige. Right? Nah, of course not. You see, Kevin is just a robot with the acronym of K-E-V-I-N. And no, I don't care enough to go back and see what those letters actually stand for. I truly could not be bothered. Kevin and Jen have a lovely chat of what I like to call character assassination. Daddy issues galore. Tony Stark, Star-Lord, Thor, Loki. Same daddy, same issues. Phase 1 through 3 are days of the past if you haven't been receiving that message all throughout Marvel's Phase 4 filler art. If there's anything that we the audience truly learned from this episode is that this is Jen's show. And no matter what, you'll like it no matter how it's constructed. So, what did Jen construct? Well, no Hulk King, take away those powers. Ah, I probably forgot to mention that. Todd got Hulk powers from the blood that, eh, uh, listen, it doesn't really matter anymore. The development of that storyline is taken right out of the show. Abomination? Nah, just take accountability for giving inspirational and motivational speeches while in abomination form and go back to jail. Even though you can't stay in jail because what's the point of introducing the character if you just end up in the same place as you started off, so Wong breaks him out. Titania was just forgotten about, I'm sure you guys did as well until I just now mentioned her. And Bruce can't come save the day in a show called She-Hulk, even though he has a personal vendetta against the villain. So doesn't that technically mean that She's stealing Hulk's villain in a She-Hulk show? Eh, don't think about it. Jen will do that for you. And we're done. We're out. Oh, wait. Daredevil shows up. And I don't know if Matt and Jen are implied to be dating, but man, does Jen love to let me know that she has a booty call. God, maybe she was as lonely as the show was telling me. Oh, and Hulk has a son now. I don't know if that's a comic thing, so I won't shit on it. And I guess we'll just have to save that for the movie. Remember? Jen is making the decisions now. Move aside, Kang. Wait, never mind. That guy's killing the fucking Avengers, especially broom riding Thor and politician Sam. While I might have gone on a rant there, to wrap this all up, the She Hulk season finale was the perfect Powerpuff Girl secret ingredient clusterfuck of nonsensical, insecure, incompetent, and straight up talentless writing. Jen was and will continue to be the exact same character from the beginning of the show until the end. Nikki was and will continue to be the exact same character from beginning to end. Mallory, Golden Retriever, Wong, Abomination, the writers, still the same incompetent fucks that I met on day one. We can only hope to forget this dumpster fire of a finale, and since this isn't on the same level of popularity as Game of Thrones, I have hope. I truly do. I would like to thank every one of you for sticking with me through these She-Hulk episode reviews, and no. No, I will not be doing a video on a full series recap. I'll literally perish. If you guys liked the video, then make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And if you don't, I'll just tell Jen that I didn't like the ending. Kevin can hook me up. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.